Hello Maker, it's Claire from Eclair Makery and welcome to my podcast. I am back. It has been such a long time since I have filmed a podcast episode. I believe it's been almost a year and a half since I've done one, but I am back. I am planning on doing these regularly. Um, I have missed talking with you, sharing about what's been going on in uh, my design life and my life as a crochet designer. And today, Today's episode is going to be all filling you in on what's been going on. <laughs> um, I've had two major projects that I've been working on and I'll share all those details today as well as some sneak peeks of what I have coming up and so many fun things that you are going to definitely want to stick around and watch this episode. <music> So welcome to my podcast, friend. I have my tea here to drink while we are chatting today. Um, and I have so, so, so many things to share with you. Um, first of all, if you have been up to anything exciting in the last year, I'm sure you have. Be sure to let me know in the comments below whether that's a fun crochet project you've been working on, a fun trip that you've taken. I know it's been really hard for us to do vacations and all of that. Um, with all of the different restrictions going on. But if you've done anything fun, I would love to know because I'm going to be sharing a ton of fun things that I've been up to and um, I'd love to hear what's going on in your life. Um, and before we get started, be sure to hit the like button for this video to show your excitement for the podcast coming back and to also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my podcast episodes as well as all the fun things that I do here on my channel. I have, uh, I'm gonna be doing yarn reviews more often. I have patterns, tutorials, uh, all sorts of fun things. So, Let's talk about what's been going on in uh, the makery. There has been a lot. Let me let me tell you, it is it has been a year. Am I right? Like from the pandemic going on to trying to get back to semi normal life. It's it's hard to get back to normal life, um, and my life has been really crazy. It, 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 it's not going back to how it used to be before the pandemic. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> um, I mean, if you've been following me on Instagram, you've kind of been seeing this, but I haven't really shared about it here on my YouTube channel. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. So the first big thing that's been going on, you might have seen some of my videos about this, but I wrote a book. Yes. In the last year and a half, I have been working on a crochet book and I even have a copy of it here to show you today. <gasps> check it out it's my book crochet color work made easy i got my offer copy in a few weeks ago um and it's still so surreal that i actually have a printed book that i get to share with you and that you get to buy oh my goodness and this is going to be in your home <laughs> how cool is that so let me share a little bit about how this all started so uh, this project is kind of still ongoing because it hasn't officially been released yet. Um, but this all got started at the very beginning of the pandemic last year. Uh, I was reached um, out to by a publishing company and I thought it was spam mail. Definitely did not believe that a publisher was reaching out to me because I was still pretty um, small in terms of my following that I had. I mean, I was kind of picking up some traction, um, but I was nowhere near the amount that I thought I needed in order to write a book. It, I mean, it was one of my goals. Uh, that was, I mean, it's been my dream since I was a little kid to be an author. I have been dreaming of this for such a long time. I used to dream with my sister um, that we were going to be the next Bronte sisters and that we were going to write fiction books and we we're going to be famous and do all sorts of things, be authors for life. Um, but that didn't really happen. I have not written a fiction book. I tried to when I was younger, but that did not, that didn't work out. No, my books, my fiction writing is not good. <laughs> um, but I emailed the publishing company back and it turned out to be real. It was totally real. And I met with them um, over the phone. We talked about um, sharing some of my story and my goals for my business. And they pitched an idea to me that they wanted me to write. And it was the exact idea that I wanted to do, which was a beginner color workbook that would 
be basically a guidebook to color work. It would teach all the techniques needed for it. It would have a bunch of patterns in it. And um, I was so excited that the vision that they had was the exact vision that I had. I mean, that almost never happens. So I've just had this really surreal experience in terms of publishing. I didn't have to pitch my idea. They pitched it to me. They reached out to me super, super crazy circumstances. And this was all at the very beginning of the pandemic. Like, I think it was about two weeks after lockdown that I got this email. Um, so this has been my pandemic project. <laughs> Pretty much the whole entire pandemic I've been working on this. So that just shows you how long this has all been going on. Um, so then it took about two or three months for us to kind of hash out what was going on to be happening with, um, this book, like how we were going to have the patterns be, what was going to be included in there. And um, then once we did that, then I was able to order my yarn, which was, that was the super fun part. I love getting to do that. And I was super excited because Lion Brand sponsored my book. They provided all of the yarn support for it. And I got to play with so many pretty yarns. I mean, look at all of those projects on the cover. Oh, that's all Lion Brand yarn. So, so pretty. And I went with a pretty um, consistent color palette. I tried to go really fall. I, I mean, you can tell by the sweater I'm wearing. This is one of my other designs, not in my book. Um, but I love fall colors. So the book, of course, had to have fall colors in it. And um, once I got the yarn, then it was about three or four months of crocheting. Yeah, it was a lot. Let's just say I did not do any designing for most of last year because I was writing this. I had to do 18 patterns for this. And there were, I think, there's six garments, a bunch of accessories, some home decor pieces, this huge blanket right here. It was a lot of crocheting. There were even some days that I did like 13 to 14 hours, I only took breaks to eat and to sleep. And I barely wanted to sleep because my anxiety levels were so high because I needed to meet these different deadlines. So I was very, very stressed. Um, and then once I finished the crocheting and I got all the samples done, it was a lot of pattern writing. Thankfully, I use Stitch Fiddle for all my color work patterns. And so that helps take away a lot of the work in terms of writing, but it was a huge editing process to be able to narrow down how we wanted to have the patterns be all consistent, to get it consistent with what the publishers wanted for it. And um, it was a lot of work, but I was able to do it with the help of my amazing tech editor, um, Emily from Fiat Fiber Arts. If you are a crochet designer, be sure to check her out. She has amazing tech editing skills. Like this book would not be what it is without her. Um, she deserves major props for helping me write this. Um, and then once we got all of that done, we were able to have a super fun photo shoot. And that was an amazing day of getting to work with a really cool wedding photographer here in the Fresno area. She has such beautiful style of photography, uses a lot of natural light. We got to rent a really cool Airbnb to take all the photos for the book in. Um, and that was a, just a really cool experience to get to have all of my designs come together and see them modeled on people and uh, model some myself. Um, yeah, I'm not the only model in the book. I've got a couple models that are in there, um, which that was a big thing that I wanted to do was showcase different body types. And so I got to have, I have a 2XL or 3XL and then a large, and then I was an extra small, um, at the time of the book. I'm not anymore. Um, more on that later. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it was really, it was really fun to see how excited they all were. And the photographer, she's a crocheter. So that, I didn't know that when I picked her out and reached out to her, but then she was like, I'm a crocheter. This is amazing. Of course I would love to uh, take photos for your book. And that was, that was really, really cool. I, I just, I just love that. I can't say enough good things about her. Um, and so speaking of the photos, I want to show you some of the designs in here. I haven't shown a ton of sneak peeks of this yet. Um, 
but I wanted to show some to you. So let me find some of my favorite designs. This is one of my favorite designs. This is the Feathers in the Wind Shawl, and this is Jasmine. She's one of the models. Isn't she just gorgeous? Oh, I just love this photo and this design so much. It's a really cool shawl that uses tapestry crochet. And then this is that really cool blanket design on the cover. Um, it has giant paisleys on it and then a huge flower in the middle. And then let's see. Oh yeah, here's a fun photo of me. <laughs> I was very excited. Um, let's see, let's find some other good stuff in here. Oh yes, this is another favorite of mine. Oh, I think, let's see, I got to you know, while I was making this book, I changed the names of my patterns so much and now I don't even remember half of the names of them because it's been a while. Okay, it is the Desert Diamonds top. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. But here's another angle of it. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, I went with, I tried to go with um, a lot of simple color work designs. So if you've been following me on Instagram and seeing some of my latest stuff, a lot of it is a lot more detailed. But with this book, this is beginner. So we've got to have simple color work so that you feel comfortable making it. That is the goal of this book, is to help you feel comfortable with making color work designs. Um, and then this is another favorite, the Trailing Vines cardigan. <gasps> Isn't it so cool? It has these really cool vines of color work in the very back and then along the front. Um, and this was a this one took a while to make but the payoff for it is amazing it's such a cool sweater i might actually have to make one for myself because this was i did not keep this sample i gave the samples for um the model that the models wore they got to pick out ones that they wanted to keep they got to keep all the sweaters that i made for them in their sizes um which was really cool let me find another one. Oh yes, this is a great one. The Bloom Sweater. And this is featuring Elise. Um, she is an amazing woman. She just had twins. <laughs> so she's super cool. So she was my um, plus size model and she was so excited to get to have sweaters and try them on in her size. Um, and just, she has such amazing, like such joy. And um, she actually did all the makeup for our um, modeling sessions as well, which was super cool to have her be in the book as a model and do the makeup for it. Um, and those are just some of the sneak peeks I'll show you. Oh, and then I'll show you this la one last one. Um, and I'm going to be making videos that show more of these. But here is the forest walk sweater this one was one that i modeled i really love this pattern it's very dear to my heart um it's just a really cool fair isle sweater pattern it uses just two colors so it's not a lot of um crazy yarn that you have to juggle um but oh it turned out really great <laughs> oh i am very i'm very proud of my book um I'm very nervous about it releasing uh, just because I put a lot of my heart and soul into this project, but I am really excited for it to release because it has been a labor of love and um, a lot of tears, a lot of late nights, but it is going to pay off. And I'm just really excited to have created something that will help teach you color work and that you get to have, um, like I've created the color work playbook, um, which is available, um, on my website, but that isn't, um, it doesn't have patterns that go with it. So this has tutorials and patterns. So that will be really fun for you to be able to have. But, um, unfortunately due to COVID right now, the book release got pushed. It was actually supposed to be released in a week, but it got pushed to October 5th and now it got pushed to November 9th. So, Right now, the tentative date for the release for the book is November 9th. Don't really know for sure if that's when it's going to come out. We will see. Uh, but if it does come out on November 9th, that is my birthday. So that would be pretty cool if my book will be released on my birthday. And it will be my 25th birthday. So, Oh, no. Just kidding. I'm going to be 26. <laughs> Mom brain. Oh, yes. Spoiler alert. 
I have mom brain now. Um, so I am hoping that my book will stick with that November 9th release date, but I will keep you posted. But if you want to get a copy of this and you're really excited about it, um, you can pre-order it now on any book retailer. And I am giving away some pre-order bonuses. So if you order this and then you send your receipt to claire at eclairemakery.com, I will send you a color work um, bundle that includes four beginner color work patterns, including this sweater. And you will also get a color work class that I will be teaching. I'm going to be waiting to teach it closer to when the book comes out. But if you send me your receipt to the email address that I have here on the video, then you can get those bonuses. I will send those to you and you can get your jumpstart on color work right now. Okay, so I mentioned that I have mom brain. That is the other big project that I have been working on. Um, almost as soon as I finished writing this book, um, I found out that I got pregnant. <laughs> uh, my husband and I, we were um, trying and um, we uh, like, as soon as the book was done, I was like, okay, I've accomplished some of my biggest goals in my life. I started my business and I wrote a book. So let's move on to starting a family. Um, and um, it's been almost two months since my son was born. Yes, I have a cute little baby, baby Oliver. <laughs> he is such a cutie. Um, I honestly can't believe that I'm a mom now. That was a crazy experience of being pregnant during a pandemic. Um, it is not fun to have to go through that. A lot of it, you feel like you're alone because you have to isolate a lot to try to stay healthy, um, as well as you can't have your spouse come to most of your appointments unless it's an ultrasound. Um, so that, it was a very, um, I'll say stretching time for me, um, not only because my stomach stretched, but also because it just stretched me, um, like mentally and emotionally. Um, but it's been, it's been a amazing journey. I, I, I wasn't able to crochet for probably three months, I think all during the beginning of my pregnancy in the first trimester, I was so nauseous that I couldn't pick up a crochet hook because whenever I would crochet, the motion of crocheting would make me super nauseous. And so I felt like I was going to throw up every time that I crocheted. So that's not really a fun thing. <laughs> and then when I was in the second trimester, then I was tired. So then I didn't really have a lot of energy to crochet and my brain just wasn't on any designing kick. Um, so I haven't really, I didn't really design anything after my book for like a good six months. I was kind of designing some stuff um, cause I had made some commitments to Lion Brand when I, um, uh, was writing my book like before I was um, pregnant and so I thought oh yeah totally I can keep all my commitments no I could not keep all my commitments <laughs> they did not work out as well as I hoped so after I was done with all of my commitments at the beginning of this year then I was like nope not gonna really do anything I stayed an ambassador for We Crochet um, but I did not continue working with a lot of companies for a while. Now I'm starting to pick that up again, but I did not for the longest time because crocheting while not feeling well is not great. Um, but I am back to designing now and I started actually designing like late second trimester, early third trimester, and I even started getting back into garment design. Yep. I had sworn off of garment design at the beginning of this year. I was like, I hate it. I don't like the process at all. But then I found a design idea that I liked. Um, you might have seen it, the Adventure Tee. It's one of my favorite patterns that I have ever designed. It has a world map on it. Super cool. It's available in my shop, so you can check that out. Um, and I love that pattern. I even have a whole video that talks about um, the, how I made it, how I designed it and showing you some up close looks at that. Um, but that design I started making, I think it was like three weeks before I gave birth. 
um, to my son, Ollie. And I know, crazy, right? Designing a garment that late. But I was, I had been having false labor for a while. Uh, I had false labor symptoms for about two months before I gave birth. So I was just struggling, struggling with contractions. I needed something to distract me. And so I thought, why not design a crochet pattern? I mean, it can't be too crazy, right? To design a detailed color work pattern. <laughs> <laughs> and I designed that and that um, people love that and so that design has a very special place in my heart just because I'm but I think about my son when I um whenever I wear it whenever I look at it just because it was in those last few weeks when I was struggling with that excitement and nervousness of becoming a mom I I had wanted to be a mom for a very long time um I mean when I was a kid I used to say that the only job that I wanted to ever do was to be a mom and um so I was really excited but it's such an emotional roller coaster being pregnant and having to um, figure out those different things um and like you're excited about having a child but also terrified like how can I possibly become a mom um but I am really excited about being a mom it's been really it's been very uh very stretching just like pregnancy was <laughs> um but I, I love it. It's great. I love my son so much. And I am going to try to teach him how to crochet when he's old enough. We'll see. But keep an eye out for some cute baby things. I have not crocheted him anything um, baby related yet. But I might be having a pattern idea for something baby related. Um, I probably should design something for my son. But I think I was just like, I don't want to do that. I know how much work is going to go into something like that and he won't wear it for very long so I'll wait till he's a little bit older. But I have some cute ideas that I <laughs> I guess that I need to design for him um, and I think that you guys would like them too so I might as well design them for you too. Um, but that those two things, my book and my baby, I call my book baby and my real baby. <laughs> Those have been my biggest projects I've been working on. Um, but now I'm back into designing crochet patterns, creating new content, and that has been fun to get back into that. Um, most of my pregnancy felt like I was on maternity leave. So almost as soon as I was um, done with, like as soon as I gave birth, about a week later, I was like, okay, I'm ready to crochet again. Let's do this. I'll have my husband watch the baby and then I can um, crochet again because I need to be sane and I need to feel normal again because I s I'm starting to feel like a human so I want to get back to feeling like me. Um, so I have my biggest project that I have done recently has been my pumpkin patch blanket. Um, you might have seen uh, here on my channel or on my blog that I am hosting a crochet along for it. Um, I brought it so that I can show you it a little bit more up close, um, but it has these really fun corner to corner squares. So it's done as an assembly blanket. So it's not all in one piece. Usually my corner to corner designs are all in one piece, but this one is done in separate pieces. So this one has fall leaves, then it has pumpkins, and then an apple basket in the center, and then it repeats across um, with the leaves and the pumpkins. Um, and then the middle has this super cute little vintage red pickup truck. Let's see if I can get it so you can see it. But it's this cute little vintage red pickup truck that has little pumpkins in the back. And I even included a little apple basket in the back as well. Um, just thinking of all of my favorite fall things in one blanket. Um, and I loved making this one so much that I already have a Christmas one in the works. So I'm thinking I'll have one for each season. So we'll have this cute fall one, we'll have a winter one, one for spring, and then one for summer. So I am going to be hopefully able to host crochet alongs for each of the blankets because um, you guys are loving it so far and that's made me so happy. <laughs> I love when people are excited about my designs and you guys seem to really like my blankets. I don't know why, but um, I'm glad you like them. That's really cool. And hopefully you'll like um, some of my crochet garments I have coming out because um, those are the recent projects 
the ones I'm crocheting currently. So here's a sneak peek at one of them. Um, I'm getting back to doing my textured designs mixed with color work. So I like doing textured stitches mixed with color work designs. I did that on my honeybee tea and my rose garden tea. Um, and so I thought, well, I have this cute design. <gasps> it's mushrooms. I saw this really cool cardigan on Pinterest that someone found at a thrift store and it had like mushrooms that looked pretty much like this all over the sweater. But I didn't want to have to stitch up a bunch of mushrooms over an entire sweater because that's a lot of work. So I focused on just making them along the bottom edges and then I'm thinking um, that I will have on the front of the cardigan there will be some uh, like a pocket with a mushroom on it and maybe some mushrooms on the sides of the pockets. We will see. I'm currently designing it right now um, but then I added the moss stitch because I thought oh what goes great with mushrooms and then thinking about the forest and thinking about a textured stitch that would look cool and the name ties to it and I thought why not do the moss stitch. So I'm loving how the texture looks and it's really cool to see the transition of the texture and the color work. Um, so the color work section has just single crochet and then the top has the linen stitch which is just a variation of single crochet. Um, but I am just very happy with how this is turning out. It has been really fun to get to see this together and it worked up really quickly because most of it is just doing a solid color. So maybe this garment will convince you to try color work. Um, and then I also brought out a design that I have been work, I have, I mean, I've been kind of thinking about it for, I guess I'd say the last two years. Um, I say every year that I'm going to make this, but I swear this is the year. This is the year this design is going to come out. Um, so you better hold me to that. <laughs> but you, guys love my pine wood pillow and I am making a pine wood sweater. <laughs> How cool is this? Um, one of my photos for this design way back two years ago was one of my most liked photos ever, but I didn't end up making it. I was using Lion Brand Woolies mixed with, um, I th think this is Lion Brand Woolies thick and quick. Yeah, so I was using Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick for the whole sweater, um, but unfortunately I've been having issues with wool allergy, so that has come back, unfortunately. I've had one off and on for years, and then as soon as I stopped being pregnant, it came back, which is really unfortunate, because look, I've got all this really pretty hand-dyed yarn, and I really want to use it, but my skin says no, and I've been trying to just make designs that I can wear, because, I mean, I put all this hard work into it. Might as well wear it. So... Um, I was troubleshooting this design. I've had it in a basket for, I had my first sample for a year. Then I took that out and I thought, okay, I'll start over again. So then I started it over again last year and was going to do it and did not. So I had that in a basket for a year. So this design has been on the shelves for two years, but now I've taken it out and I've redone it with faux fur yarn. So this is going to be like one of the coziest sweaters ever. Um, it's going to be amazing and it works up incredibly fast. So it has the classic baubles from the Pinewood sweater. It has the faux fur yarn. It's going to be so cozy and perfect for the holidays. So I'm just waiting on some more yarn to finish this up, but I will be putting out a tester call for this soon. So you might want to jump on my tester call email. I'll try to remember to include a, a link for that um, email list if you want to be a tester for me in the description box below. So keep an eye out for those links. But a pine wood sweater is coming. It has the ribbing, it has cute ribbing, it has faux fur, it has the pine wood um, pine tree. It's going to be so fun. I am very excited about this. Um, and then another design I'm working on, this one is not coming out for a very long time, um, but all I'll show you is this little motif. And it is going to be in a um, issue of We Crochet Magazine. So you'll wanna keep your eye out for that because it's going to have a bunch of these motifs. 
That's all I will say, but it is corner to corner crochet and I'm going to be trying something new that I have never done before in any of my designs. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm hoping that it will work. It's going to be the, my big project this next week. So lots of crocheting in making this design. Um, those are my three big projects. I have some other um, designs that I'm working going to be working on. I'm trying to get all of my winter designs done um, because I want to work ahead, have a bunch of stuff planned out so that if I need to take a break, I can. Um, but I have a lot of really fun ideas that I'm very excited about. So I'll be showing them off in um, my upcoming podcast episodes. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on this, be sure to subscribe because I've got a lot of fun stuff coming. Um, but that is kind of everything that I have to share with you today. Um, just a big life update on my book and that I have a baby now. I'm a mama. <laughs> and then sharing those upcoming designs. Um, but before we go, I want to do something fun to celebrate the podcast being back. And I want to give away some yarn from my stash. I have this gorgeous We Crochet Daydream yarn that I have had sitting on my shelves for quite a while. And I have been wanting to design something with it, but I think that it would be better served going to a new home. Um, and I have it in these beautiful colors. I have it in I think that this is, this is called Rose Quartz. This is one of my all-time favorite colors. And then I have it in Pewter. So it's these really pretty pinks. And this is like a very light blush. Um, and then this is a rose color. They're really pretty together. I have um, quite a few skeins of it. I think I have about three or four of each. So if you want to win this yarn, it's discontinued. So you would be one of the few people who has it. It is a alpaca nylon merino wool blend. So it's a great blend. It's fluffy, soft, really pretty for sweaters. So if you, if you want to win this yarn, leave a comment below with what you would make with this pretty yarn, um, whether it be a sweater, a hat, I would love to know. And if you comment below, you'll be entered to win um and then i will give this away i will announce it in my next podcast video who the winner is so leave a comment below you'll have a week to enter and you will have a chance to get this really pretty yarn so that is our fun celebration for that the podcast is back and i am going to try to give away yarn in each of my podcast episodes or at least every other episode um I'm thinking of bringing back ones that have guests in them as well because you guys really liked when I had guests here on my podcast. So if you would like guests, leave a comment below. I would love for that. I'll also do a poll here on YouTube um, and then on Instagram as well if you guys would like to have guests back here on the podcast. But I'm going to be doing a lot of podcast episodes with just me sharing about what's going on in my life and sharing about what projects I'm working on and designs I'm making. Um, so you guys will be some of the first people to know what I have coming out because I will share it all here on the podcast. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming podcast episodes. And if you would like to join the um, crochet along for my pumpkin patch blanket that I shared earlier, you can do that at the link in the description box below. It will be going till October 25th, so you will be able to work on that. And we are working through the fall leaf sweater, uh, fall leaf sweater, no, fall leaf squares this week um the right leaf and then the left leaf as well so you have tons of time to join the crochet along and if you want to just get the pattern that is also available in my shops so all of the links for stuff I mentioned in this episode are below and um I'm so excited to get to start this podcast again so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next week for the next podcast episode happy stitching bye <laughs>